quote from State Farm, here's how we would be able to ensure that new auto is working. So, I mean, again, that's, it's good for the company, it's good for the customer, it's good for everybody. DSS Mobile, that's one of those things where you would click in, I think Progressive has a better line on it with the snap in. I mean, you see Flo saying that you can snap that thing in and lower your insurance rate. State Farm has the same thing. But now, not only do you snap in, now we've also got it on a mobile device. Okay, so it can tell who's driving the car and basically do the same thing. Final one with that is what's called odometer stack. Basically what that does is that takes a picture of your odometer. Anybody ever take a picture with a cell phone before? Ooh, new technology, right? Um, as far as odometer snap and why that's important for us, when you're driving your car, the way that we rate that, we rate it long annual mileage or short annual mileage. If you have long annual mileage, that means you're more of a risk because your car's on the road more often. If you have short annual mileage, you're not as much of a risk because you don't drive as much. Makes sense, right? If you don't drive as much, you're not going to pay as much, right? Well, lots of times people lie to the insurance company. So if you know that you're not going to have to pay as much because you don't drive as much, are you going to tell us that you drive a long way? Not going to be cheaper if you don't. Well, you got to prove that. Okay? Because we know that sometimes people might be mistaken. Well, the way that we do that right now is we write it out, we send you a letter, you write down the odometer, that goes back in, somebody looks at it, they compare it, and say, okay, you either keep that discount or you don't keep that discount. So lots of paper and people and things like that. Odometer snap, I snap it, I say which vehicle it is, I snap it, it comes in, it automatically updates the system, you keep that discount if you're supposed to, you lose that discount if you don't, if you're not supposed to have it, and nobody's supposed to touch it. So everything's nice and automated, it's easy. What does that do for State Farm? That makes it easier, we don't have to handle all of that stuff. What does that make do for our customer? If we don't have to handle all that stuff, then it's cheaper. If it's cheaper for us, it's cheaper for you. So again, it's good for everybody. And it's that win-win that you're always going to be looking for, whether you're doing presentations in business, whether you're trying to get a, a beefed up classroom. Vehicle ownership experience, uh, that's more for state, us State Farm dorks. But basically what we're doing is we're looking at all of it. Okay, not just you wrecked your car or you paid your premium, all the different things that go into that. So that's auto in a nutshell. I'll At State Farm, people. we know that a smart home can help protect what matters most to our customers, their family and possessions. Think about it. A smart home can notify you and put you in control anywhere, anytime, all from your <coughs> smartphone. A smart home knows whether you left the garage door open or the coffee pot on and takes care of it. There's no more nagging worry when you leave home. Water sensors could detect a pipe leak and automatically trigger a water shutoff valve to minimize loss. While you're on vacation, a smart home can give the appearance the house is occupied by automating lights or an outdoor sprinkler system. And smart home cameras could help you check in on your pets, children, and even grandma to make sure they're all safe. Smart homes provide real solutions to real problems. As technology rapidly evolves, the State Farm Innovation Team is building relationships with emerging and established leaders within the smart home industry. We're helping to shape the future, whether it's providing a renter-specific solution in urban markets or technology to enable seniors to stay in their home longer. A smart home puts the customer in control. Now that's something to feel smart about. So again, we had mentioned we do homeowners insurance, right? Basically, if you have a security system in your home, we will lower your rate by 5%. Why? Because security systems lowers our exposure. Not as many people are going to break in. You've got your um, fire detection. You've got automatic notification to ADT or Vivint or whoever it might be. It lowers our risk. We, ba we basically just partnered with some other things to make those homes even smarter. You might have heard of Lowe's Iris. You can do it yourself. Okay? State Farm partner with that. We get a kickback. We get a portion of every iris that they sell at Lowe's, okay, which is do-it-yourself home security. Uh, we've also partnered with ADT. We've partnered with Lively as one of our new ones, Canaries. You buy a Canary, you take it, you set it down, and it's your security system. You don't have to plug it into anything. Pretty cool. And again, we're going to be able to, State Farm can help get discounts on that um, as far as purchasing as well as lowering your insurance. Um, ADT, big partnership right then, right now. Um, there's a big push to keep people in their homes longer. Why would you want to be in your home longer? Well, when I get old, I don't want to go to a retirement home. I want to stay in my home and be old and stodgy and yell at kids who run through my yard. Okay, that's what I want to do. But if I need assistance, I might not be able to stay there. 
with a lot of this stuff, that's going to allow me to stay there. Uh, my children can check in on me. They can make sure that I took my meds. Um, there are sensors that say when I took my medication, that I opened up the refrigerator, that I fed the dog, things like that. We're tied into all of those different things. Why do we care? If I stay in my home longer, I'm going to keep paying my home insurance longer. So that's that revenue stream that we've already established. It makes me happy to be able to be in my home. It makes State Farm happy because they can keep my money. It makes my family happy because we're providing this great service. So everybody wins. Run through a couple of other things so that we can get to questions because I know I've been babbling, but hopefully it's, it's been okay or at least informative. Um, end of life services, everybody comes to end of life. All right? There's a lot of stuff that you got to do at that point in time. If you've never dealt with it before for a friend or a loved one, then you don't know what you need to do. We can help you out with that. The quantified self. That's where I spend a lot of my time. Anybody ever seen a, a wearable or a fitness tracker, Fitbit, things like that? It's a huge business right now. I think right now in the, in the fitness space, last time I checked, there were 358 different types of wearables that were out there that all track different stuff. Okay? Is there a place for State Farm in that? We definitely think so. Because again, if I can keep you healthier, then I can keep you ha happier, then I can keep you in your home longer, um, and so we're, we're doing a lot of work, or I personally am doing a lot of work with that. Uh, big one that we've made news with recently, and that's with drones. Anybody ever seen a drone before? Anybody ever fly a drone before? See, and I think it's neat, because that, like, my area, that's what we do. Um, it's tech research. They're, they're like the full-on tech folks, okay? So we hang out with them a lot, because they're a lot of fun, and they have a lot of toys. Um, but so we, we fly the drones. But basically, State Farm was the first commercial company, because like we can all fly drones. We can buy one, take it out, fly it. Um, there's some rules that go along with that. But right now, it's legal in the United States for a company to use drones for commercial profit or to make money off of it. Like It's illegal for a farmer to fly drones over their fields to check them out with a camera, because they're going to make money off of that. Do they? Well, yeah, they do, because they're out in the middle of nowhere and nobody's listening. Um, but as far as, like Amazon, can they do deliveries? Yes, not in the U.S. Like they're practicing and they're doing it other places, but they can't in the U.S. State Farm was the first commercial company to get what's called an FAA exemption, or the Federal Aviation Administration okay to start practicing and piloting these. And so basically we got two. Well, we definitely got one, which is Sky Scout. That's not right. Wrong pictures. Um, but basically what that is, is that's a fixed wing airplane. Okay, so like basically like, like a big model or a big model plane. And what we would use that for is um, in catastrophe situations, so like we had the tornadoes up in Washington a little while ago. Um, basically what they would do with that is they would take it and they would fly it over that area and get all of the digital imagery, overlay that on a map, on a GPS map, so they could find all of the specific locations, overlay that on top of a um, customer chart, basically, and they would be able to look and say, okay, house destroyed, house destroyed, house damaged, house destroyed, house destroyed. State Farm customer, not State Farm, farm customer, State Farm customer, go through it like that. They'd be able to say that that's, um, that's Mrs. Bonner's house, and call her on her cell phone because she's not in the area anymore. Hey, your house is a total loss. This is how much money we have it insured for. We're directly depositing that money to your account. Make sure that you stay in the hotel. That's going to be covered as well. <coughs> and we're done. Okay? And nobody even had to go out there. Maybe down the road, one said that we had to have an adjuster go out there and take a look at it. Okay, they know exactly where they need to go. So that's going to save everybody a lot of time, money, effort. If it's your house that got damaged or destroyed, you're going to get things right away. Um, that's going to be a better experience for you. The other one that we're working on is called Remote Roof. Can we do this yet? No, but we've got what's called a patent which means that nobody else can do it. If they want to do it the same way, they got to pay us money. So anybody ever have a claims adjuster come to your house? Like, we just got a new roof this last summer. So a guy's got to come out, he gets a ladder, he goes up on your roof, looks, he's like, oh yeah, there's some damage, you know, that type of thing. Well, we half of our employee force are claims adjusters. How many houses do you think you can get up on in one day? Now, the downside of a lot of that is if you're climbing on the roof, sometimes people fall off. Okay, that's no good for the person who fell off. That's no good for the company that employs them because then I got to pay for that. You can't go get on another roof, all that sort of stuff. We're working with drones right now. So that claims adjuster goes out there with a the drone, goes over, flies it up on top, looks around, and it says, okay, damage here, damage here, damage there. The whole thing isn't damaged. We'll give you X amount of money for your roof. Here's your check. Go to the next one. So pretty cool technology. Can we do that right now? 
No, we can't because the visual imagery technology isn't good enough. So the cameras that we put on them, it, they're just not there yet. Are they going to be? Yeah. So we're using um, 3D visual technology as well as what's referred to as spectroscopy um, to basically scan all of those roofs or figure out how to do it. Uh, Sighting identifier, a new one that we're pushing through. I think we just announced that. Um, basically, anybody ever have siding damage before? Hail, that type of thing. The way that we used to do it is if that got damaged, we'd cut off a piece and we'd mail it to this guy who was down in the basement at corporate headquarters, like from all over the U.S. If they couldn't tell what type of siding that was, because in most situations, it's only going to be one side of your house that's going to get damaged, right? Like you're not going to have damage all over the place for the storm. It comes from one side. Well, when we replace that one side, we kind of want it to match the rest of it. So we need the original manufacturer and everything like that. They don't stamp that all over. So what they do is they cut off a piece and they send it to Dave and he'd look it up and he'd look through all the different hundreds of thousands of colors and manufacturers and things like that and he'd be like, oh, here it is. And well, we came up with an app. Again, visual identification. So you take that, you put it up there. There's your photo. Hey, there's your match. This is what it is. We can get that. So pretty cool technology. And again, we're saving time. It's time for the company. It's benefit for the customer. Everybody's happy in the end. Uh, how do we source ideas? We get ideas from all over the place. My group comes up with them. Um, everybody in the company, we have a site that we can put those ideas in. Um, externally, uh, we work with universities. We work with startup incubators. Anybody know what that is? An incubator? Anybody know what an entrepreneur is? What's an entrepreneur? Someone who has an idea that they want to make a business mm -hmm. Somebody who has an idea. And in most of the situations, those ideas aren't things like transporters and teleporters and things like that. When we talk about innovation, innovation is generally, and most of the time, it's identifying a problem and then finding a new way to solve it. Not the old way, but a new way. These entrepreneurs say, hey, I've got a good idea. I want to make a business out of that because that's a problem that other people have. I'm not the only one. And so then they make a business out of it. We work with a lot of what are called incubators. Incubators are buildings where entrepreneurs come. So you play, pay really low rent, you have access to resources, that type of thing. Um, I'm the relationship manager for a uh, health and wellness incubator up in Chicago. I go up there about every month, and I talk to all these different startup companies and see if any of them align with things that we're trying to do. Some of them do, most of them don't, but that's okay. Uh, a couple of months ago, I was out in Boston. Uh, we just formed a relationship with an with incubator out there called Mass Challenge, Massachusetts Challenge. Harder to get into there as an entrepreneur than it is to get into the Harvard School of Business. So that's a big push right now.